Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of the Old School Cannabis Project. Hope you're all good out there. Joined today as ever by Smoke Cool Rich and special guest, we have Real Genetics, aka Sativa Steve, if we show his uh, Instagram right. now. Real Genetics, which is the focus of the Old School Cannabis Project, getting everybody to experience what we consider to be the real genetics, not this fucked up bullshit of the last 15, 20 years. So welcome to the show, Steve. Nice to have Hell you. Hell yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I like how they did that that comparison, the real genetics. That was kind of why I did that was just because, you know, I was sick of all this, you know, hype, boof and everything. I wanted, you know, to get back to what the real genetics really were. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how I got in in touch with your stuff over time i was looking for the real skunk and i had tried everybody who offered it and then i saw your stuff and i was skeptical as everybody probably was and uh finally tried it and i just remember as soon as i started growing them they were like maybe six weeks old seedlings i started doing stem rubs and i was like man that smells like fresh asphalt you know it's not like that uh gassy smell that you get from like skunk one or any of that so i knew i knew it was different from the get and um and all that but but yeah i figured we'd talk about my experience with your genetics uh and uh what i've done with it what happened and then what i plan on doing in the future and then everything i got going in the meanwhile because it's i'm kind of limited on space right now so you know yeah that sounds awesome man um so you started with a couple of boss packs and a couple of tip town tickets is that right that's right yeah so i initially i was looking at your terp ticket and uh and i was like all right well i'm gonna try those because i like terps and uh and it had more variety than you know maybe anything else that was available so i got two terp tickets which you know is at least 30 seeds a piece so it was a whole lot more than i expected to grow but I started all of them because that's kind of just how I do it. I usually start a whole pack at a time. And uh, yeah, so I started the Terp tickets first with uh, with one of the boss packs. And uh, and I ended up keeping everything going. And I tried to get clones on as much of it as I could. Um, but what happened was... And, and it was during the winter, so it was super cold where I had everything growing. And, um, and I ended up pretty much growing all of them out. I got to the point where I separated all the different genotypes. I had the skunks in one area. I had the fruity ones in one area. I had the, uh, hazes in another area and so forth. And I separated the males and it was so fucking cold that, uh, the males never really dropped pollen except for one of the skunk males which i just i wanted to make 100 percent sure that i got skunk out of it like seeds out of it so i put one of the skunk males into a heated room that kind of had some other of it basically had your boss skunk uh females in that i was starting to flower and um out of all that stuff that that i have pictures of um I ended up getting seeds from the only skunk spray plant that was like straight skunk spray. It was it didn't have any ammonium in it. It didn't have any cabbage in it. It was just like straight skunk spray. And I pollinated that with the best smelling skunk male that had like a fresh asphalt stem rub on it. And um, yeah, so I ended up getting seeds from that, fortunately. But out of that first batch the other keeper genetics that I got that um, I ended up losing uh, at, at the apartment that I was at uh, due to unfortunate and for unfortunate circumstances, I ended up losing a blueberry plant that was like dark blue, dark purple rather. I remember and, it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then I, and I had a, a bright green that faded to yellow strawberry plant this... out, you can probably find that picture yeah the strawberry haze man like um it was the strawberry haze was was definitely my favorite because the high on it first of all the terps on it was like strawberry syrup and 
the the growth pattern was like kind of crazy it's uh it wasn't in that picture it was another one yeah if you're scrolling down you probably pop up somewhere um it might take and, some time and, yeah yeah and and uh so anyway yeah had the best high when when it was dried and cured and everything basically it had zero anxiety i would smoke yeah. it and it was it was like the best high i i had and i get a lot of anxiety oh there it is right there um on the left of the uh, males on the left of that picture the uh up uh, that like crazy one at the top left there top left uh, right here yeah right there yeah that's the one that's the strawberry and um yeah i just had a crazy growth habit to it but but anyway the high was super chill, super clear, no anxiety whatsoever. It was definitely one of the, like, without a doubt, like, I want to keep one like that and find one. You're um, talking about the strawberry haze, yeah? Yeah, the strawberry haze. Yeah, bro, i got to concur on that. The high on that is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Absolute, just lovely, lovely, lovely fucking weed, man. The flavors yeah. are so nice, and it's just such a day-brightening, happy high. Yeah, it was like... like uh, Blue, didn't you destroy some rosin you got out of that, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, country club. Wow, yeah, the, yeah, man, the country club guys in the UK. They bought some strawberry haze seeds. I don't know. <clears throat> strawberry haze skunk. Um, or maybe they found it in the tip. Yeah, I'm not sure, but either way, they grew it. The rosin they made from that is, to this day, probably got to be well, certainly the nicest rosin I've ever had, I'd say, without doubt. It's the nicest oh, rosin yeah. of any anything I've ever experienced so far. They've also made one from RKS, but I've not tried that yet. I'm waiting for the next run. I want to give it a go. But that, yeah, yeah, bro. I bought I bought the entire batch of the strawberry hay skunk rosin after I tried it. <laughs> um, and I was thinking, yeah, that's going to like last me a little while. But just with everything, it's super nice. I just find I just... I, I was thinking. I was thinking. I've stocked up for three months. It's gone like in a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I was talking yeah. about, bro. You told me you were running so through nice. it, bro. <laughs> what was that, bitch? Well, uh, that's what I was talking about, bro. You told me you were destroying that pack, bro. Yeah, it's just so nice that you just wanted more and more and more. <laughs> well, it's so medicinal too. When you get the yeah. flavor and you smoke bro. it, and it makes you feel so good, dude. You yeah. just keep on keep on smoking it because every time it's like a hit. And it gives yeah. you that 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 rush. I'm not, so I'm not gonna lie. I can remember the first time that I tried the the country club official guys. We should put their link uh, in this in this uh, episode. Yeah, I definitely somewhere. will. But um, I remember that first rosin that I smoked from them of the strawberry hay skunk, and I was just, I can remember just being in such a beautiful bliss and just thinking like. It's incredible that this tiny, tiny amount of plant extract can affect my whole being on such a great level, you know? Mind, body, mm -hmm. and soul. It's fucking amazing. Well, when you find something that really meshes well with you, you want to keep it, you know, and keep it going. And I haven't really found that in any of the modern genetics, you know, for the most part. Maybe here and there I find a good one that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. But there's always a little bit of lingering anxiety, at least for myself. So I like, yeah. I like that also why i grow the land races a lot is because the effect is uh, like a lot more mellow and it's a lot more like focused in a certain area whether that be uplifting or re relaxed or focused and uh yeah you know that's it's just like these genetics are unique and you know that's that's kind of what a lot of us are after is unique unique genetics that uh you know is a little bit less watered down yeah, so wow. I was gonna ask you uh personally, um so from you like the actual other modern stuff that you've grown, in yep. terms of strength, do you think that old school has a beat like kind of in every way, or do you think it's more do you think there's still a place for modern? So that's a good question. The modern because it's like high THC and less CBD and the terps usually aren't as good. When I smoke modern, it just makes me stupid and it's really strong. So I think there's a place for modern cannabis for people 
who either really like that stuff that just like lays them out flat or like have a tolerance for anxiety. Like they don't get anxiety and they need that strong shit or for people who have addiction problems who need that really, really strong hit that maybe they don't care about the anxiety. They just want something to take the edge off of like an addiction or something, you know? Um, and how was but, the skunk hitting compared to that? You don't think the skunk was uh stronger in the flooring aspect? The skunk was the skunk was a nice high. It was like a well rounded high. You know, it was like it was like it was chill. You know, I would smoke it, and it was like I could feel my head just kind. You know what I mean? Like you can feel it in your eyes sometimes, like or like yeah. on you. It feels like you're wearing a helmet. You know what I mean? Like yeah, see, uh, like that was that's like. I, that's the type of stuff that I feel like is the real like knockout power, and like you're you don't get the anxiety half of it, right? Know? And that that's what yeah. it is, man. Like you get you get all the good with like you don't get you don't get the negative effects of like a you know a bottlenecked gene pool that is most of modern cannabis these days. Um, you know, there's still some good ones here and there, and find some good terps, but yeah, you know, if 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 you start like um like 50 seeds uh out of a terp ticket and you find three outstanding plants i might i would start 50 seeds of a hype strain and they might all be much more similar but there's not going to be those three outstanding you're not going to find the golden pheno you know that's right that's that's right that's that's right i'd rather have 50 plants where there's a handful that aren't really so impressive and then have three that are way more impressive than having all of them be kind of somewhere in between and just just like kind of mediocre, you know. Like, um, it's all about it's all about just the words, bro. Because <clears throat> I was listening to what you say about the strength, and I, I just don't find that most of these modern strains actually do put me on my back or anything like that. It is a I find if it has maybe any effects, the first time blue like maybe for the first hour but after that you know like it, the the tolerance yep. gets built man yeah I just I just find it's like if, last time I smoked anything you know that was considered hype and some of it he had been telling me for about two fucking weeks how great it was before he gave me some and it was honestly like the most unimpressive thing ever there was no <laughs> barely detectable high that lasts about 15 minutes. You know, I remember the Dutch early 2000, late 90s stuff. That would sometimes put you on your back, some of the Indica dominant stuff they had, but in a much much like a more potent way than the more modern stuff of the last 15 years does. That stuff to me now barely has any effect whatsoever other than mm-hmm. like boredom, you know? It's, well, really, it's, it's like really boring, you know. Boring, exactly, exactly. It's just boring. Like, there is no stimulus to it. There's nothing stimulating. It doesn't fire That's up right. the mind or the senses in any way. Well, so, like, we had Mister Sauer on the other episode, and he's like, you know, really passionate about his uh, herb and the experiences it gets from like the old school stuff. And he's, he's good at describing it, and yep. people don't realize that. It, and certainly, you do if the sort of like the whole plethora of land races you grow, you're going to have come across the stimulate in uh, yeah. kind of the stuff that gives you almost intuition or creative mm-hmm. or a whole range of different stimuluses that, and experiences yep. that are just completely fucking missing in anything well, from the modern era. But that's what it is. You know, the cannabinoid profile, if you, if you look at some of the like testing that people have done, the cannabinoid profile and terpene profiles are like almost I they're just so similar. It you know, it's like they're all the same and it for all the modern cannabis for the most part, even if they're different, they're just they're still on the same wavelength, they're still the same vibe, you know, than some of the other plants that uh some of these other like old school genetics and land races are just you grow a whole bunch and yeah, a bunch of them might not be great, but when you find one that's good, it's better than everything else you have. You know, it's just how it is. It's, uh, it's, it's like, you want to find something better. You got to hunt through a few numbers and find that one. And you best believe it's going to be, it's going to be better than anything you've probably ever had before. If you, if you know what you're, what you're looking at and you're willing to give it a shot and, 
you know, without preconceived notions. A lot of people are just, well, oh, the bag appeal, oh, this and that. Dude, you don't smoke it with your eyes, you know? Like, I mean, <laughs> and if you sell it, well, people, someone's smoking it, right? I mean, people got to wake up eventually and realize what good weed is. It's it's not weed that looks pretty. You know, that's cool. Yeah. Enough. You know, people always say to me, oh, it's difficult to, like, kind of, uh, you know, get people to to buy the stuff that doesn't have the same bag appeal as mods. And I'm like, well, surely, don't you just give them, like, one joint to try? That's all they need. And right, once they, right. Once they try the effects, you know, it's, 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 it's mind's mind changed, game changed. Right, right. I mean, the first thing people do is look at the weed, but, you know, and and – I, I think people should start bringing back fluffy weed because fluffy sure. weed, it's like lime green. Usually it smells crazy strong. It's sticky. Fluffy weed is like my favorite. I, you know, I, I like weed that it's a big fucking bag of grass. You know what I mean? It's just like you open it and it smells crazy and you smoke it and the high is crazy. It just, I yeah. associate those type of looking buds with like the crazy effect and the crazy smell that is like intoxicating it smells like perfume, you know? Yeah. And, and I think, I, I just don't think people have all experienced it. I, you know, the first, some, some of the first weed I ever grew and smoked was land race sativa. So when I started growing other shit that was like hybrids, I was like, why did, why don't they, where, when's it going to start smelling good? You just, it do, it just they all smell like they, to me they all smell like slight gas like avocado or something you know like a lot of them just smell similar and uh, yeah man I just I want that loud I want it I, if it's loud I'm interested you know um, that's well, kind of what it is I think we should definitely remind people that the blueberry well you mentioned the strawberry haze the strawberry haze was like a sister plant from the blueberry line that I've got in the blueberry genetics. And sometimes you'll find a blueberry plant that also changes from pure blueberry and becomes more strawberry at the end. So the strawberry stroke blueberry chips, they are really uplifting, day brightening, mm -hmm. uh, anti antidepressant, if you like. Oh, that absolutely. Kind of, that kind of effect. So if people are looking for really, you know, a good variety that will make you feel like noticeably better when you smoke it rather than dull down depressed fucking lethargic yeah. bored you can feel a really much different kind of beautiful high from the oh, yeah. blueberry well i'll tell so, you what i was i would smoke some of that stuff and i'm gonna tell you right now i i would be the first thing i'm thinking is damn like i feel good just sitting here but <laughs> damn i could go do laundry i could go mow the lawn I could do anything I want right now. I could go have a conversation with somebody and just I'm happy to do any of that shit because I'm feeling so good right now and I'm not there's no anxiety and I'm just super there's it like takes the pain away in your body too, you know. It just you know, it just and then there was that gooseberry that I found. Yeah. That was also in on that same wavelength of the the blueberry and strawberry. That gooseberry was crazy and um you know, that unfortunately, that that whole second batch of plants that I grew from from your stuff that w had boss plants and turp tickets ended up losing that and everything else I had with uh, yeah. when I went through like a breakup with uh, yeah, my last issues at the time. I remember you telling me, yeah, yeah my, my shame, last man. my last girlfriend and everything. But she, you know, she did it to protect me or whatever. So but but I won't get into that. But um, but I lost everything, nevertheless. And um. But you know that 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 fucking gooseberry plant, man. That that was a special one. I I would kill to find a blueberry or a gooseberry or a strawberry again. And Did I've you got get to like, smoke the gooseberry. I never got to smoke it. You know, I just I I grew it. It had seeds in it. I was I had seeded it with a turp ticket males. Yeah. And um, you know, and and it had the same turp same turp line, just slightly different. It was that that sour gooseberry and it, yeah. it was like tart you know but it was that same it was that same kind of thing and it had thin leaves that were like you could tell it had more sativa in it and all that and um I, yeah that that was a heartbreaker that i didn't get any of those seeds out of there but 
I've got about 350 of your Terp ticket seeds right now. And um, I'm pretty much waiting to get a spot where I can start like a minimum of like 50 at a time, preferably yeah. like 200 at a time or even all of them. That'd and be run fucking super nice to see 200 right. getting popped. Exactly. Exactly. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I find three outstanding plants out of 50, then out of 200, I mean, I'm going to find something crazy in there and I, and I know I will, you know, and I'm going to make more seeds and I'm going to just keep it going, keep the best ones. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a matter of time before I can start those seeds. But I mean, yeah, those, those seeds get me, the, those seeds get me excited the way I used to get when I was like 15 and I would get bag seed from a friend back before you could even buy seeds online, you know? And I, and this is like, uh, I guess like when I first started growing was, you know, 1999 and like early two thousands was when I really started getting going with more, more of that shit. But, uh, when I would get a bag of seeds, it was like, I was giddy. I was excited, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and I don't get that way really anymore with seeds that I buy online because I do so much research and this and that, and I know kind of what I'm getting, but, with with uh, your terp tickets, I know what what the potential is, but I don't know which direction it's gonna be when I get a keeper. When I find a good one, I don't know if it's gonna be a gooseberry or strawberry, or haze or watermelon. So <laughs> it's like I get excited again when I see those seeds, and they're the big fat seeds. They're all different sizes and shapes and colors. So I know that mm -hmm. the variety is there. So. It gets me excited, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm like savoring those seeds right now. I just, I, I cannot wait to start them, you know. Well, for for a connoisseur grower or somebody who knows a, a little bit about, you know, the range of possibilities in cannabis rather than just the fucking mono profile garbage we got from today, then mm -hmm. the Tip Town tickets is ideal, you know. And I never even expected them to be so good, to be honest. And like the absolute amazing things that's come out from. I knew there's going to yep. be some special things, but like over the last four years, they have really produced. It's unfortunate like, that I have lost so many accounts due to all these little fucking cocksuckers. Yep. But because um, we do, we do lose a lot of good content, and so shit, I, I'm probably going to have forgotten some some really amazing plants that have been found over the years. But there's also a lot stick in my mind, and the, the sheer range of different fucking but incredible and unique plants that have been found out of this pack. Oh, yeah. You know, it makes me happy, man. You know, it's a fucking... It, it, people finally kind of got and understood why I put it out. So can you imagine how that, the reaction the first time I released Tip Town tickets and Fino Hunters? Basically, there's only four... There's four varieties difference between the two packs, so they're essentially the same. They've still got over 60 different skunk hazes and heirlooms yep. pollinated by that one classic skunk mail yeah but um yeah the range of amazing things that have come out of those packs this past four years it's been just nice to see you know just well i remember uh i remember growing so when i grew the turp ticket and the, the boss packs i remember that the boss packs had like more of like the meat musty meat and like ammonium and like they were like the funky skunks right but they were mostly yeah. pretty much all skunks and yeah. then when I found the straight skunk spray, that one came actually from the terp ticket. And yeah. and and the way it the way these plants grow is like they have thick stems, first of all, and they yeah. grow kind of like a broad leaf, broad leaves, like a, like an Afghan plant, but yeah. but they're like different, like lighter green, because like skunk is a lot of times will be like, you know like light lighter green not like dark dark green like a like a cush plant or whatever but um and the, they have like yarn for the pistols when the hairs start growing they're thick and curly and they look like they look like yarn kind of they look way yeah. different than any freaking genetics that you probably have, if you've grown like modern shit it, don't, it doesn't look like any modern genetics because it's not it's different different yeah. gene pool you know and um and then when when I started growing that skunk that was a skunk spray, it was like the bud kept on fucking just growing out from the center even after the hairs 
were gone. It just like kept on swelling bigger and bigger. It's a completely different type of growth that I've that I've not seen on even like the land races, like the way where it just keeps like the the hairs keep coming out and it keeps like stretching out a little bit. The bud grows bigger, but that skunk was like the bud was so like dense, but like not like dense like a like a hybrid. It was just like it kept on getting bigger like a sponge, you know. I it was just it was weird. It was so strange, and um, everybody that I showed it to, which was like a small portion of people that I trusted to show, I would be like, "Yo, like give that a little, give that a little rub, you know, on the terps on on the trichomes and smell that." And like every single time, man, the 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 look on their face and the <laughs> like the noises they would make, man, they just woo, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like that that's the real deal that's the real deal skunk that like everybody knows what a skunk smells like but when you smell it on a cannabis plant you're like holy shit like that's like straight up like skunk and fresh asphalt like just like <laughs> like gas like loud fucking shit like makes your your nose hairs sting a little bit you know just like oily fucking but yeah yeah, definitely the nose burning, and uh, some of it could be fucking eye watering, stomach churning. Yeah. People, people really will find that a whole range of skunks in those packs because I've made so put in so many different ones in there from the whole whole spectrum from not from narrow leaf to broad leaf and everything in between. You've got like real sativa dominant um, skunks, which tend to be the more like sort of aesthetic acid spray, chemically sharp types, and then the broad leaf that are more squat and big fat leaves and mm -hmm. more dense buds. They tend to be the more meaty, like you said, musky, more yep. meaty, musky, fucking on the savory side of the skunk spectrum. Yep. But also, yep. both of them skunk, you know. And you'll just find also many different skunks. We've all got a base tone of skunk and then a different nuance on the top. Like you said, yep. asphalt or burnt rubber or dog shit yep. or vomit or all manner of, you know, disgusting foul terps were in that. Oh, basket. man. Everything. There was cabbage. Sorry, but... Fucking. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was just only going to say there is, you will find in the Turk Town tickets because the boss are long gone, but I was made a mistake one day when I was like stoned and I was sorting out seeds and I poured a third of my boss pack of seeds into the tip, into the Fino Hunter mix. Oh. So in there, you are going to find in the Turk Town ticket mix now that there's still, I've got some available of, um, you will find quite a, a number, if you grow enough of them, of boss boss pack type skunks if you see what i mean you know oh yeah yeah yep, yep. So Dude, there's a whole range there's probably you'll probably probably find a couple of dozen different fucking skunks if you grew a couple of hundred you know there is there is it, and it's 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 crazy and even even that blueberry plant that short little dark blueberry plant when it was a seedling it was actually one of the best looking seedlings and i remember because for that reason because it was like one of the best ones and the stem rub on it was like an onion smell yeah. and which is crazy because then it ended up being blueberry <laughs> you know what i mean like just like blueberry syrup like it's like i like this is what is the difference between the terps on like these old school plants compared to like the new shit the new the the new shit you might get one that smells kind of good and you know, you rub that bud a couple times and then after a couple rubs, it might start smelling like chlorophyll if you're if you're crushing up the plant material. But with these old school ones, it's like a thicker smell. It's like this even before even when the buds are smaller and there's less resin, the terpenes, the fragrance is still is like stronger. And yeah. and it's like a, it's like a thicker fragrance that like when you smell it. It's just always going to be there no matter how many times you squeeze the bud. It's never going to start smelling like chlorophyll. It's just always is going to be that. And and I think there's more to it than straight terpenes. It's There's obviously like the esters and plant yeah. alcohols and all these other things we're kind of learning about. 
And, and, and I think that these old school genetics have higher concentrations of these other compounds that are clearly important, you know, and, and, um, you know, thank God somebody saved them. It is all I can say, honestly, like, it's, you know, we're bringing yeah. it. I think, I think old time I won for the gene pool, but like, <laughs> I gotta yep. say, if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be fucking available because the guy wasn't <laughs> like massively, yeah. massively open about sharing everything. And, um, yeah. And what he Thanks. did release in comparison to what I've released from his gene pool, he released a minuscule amount of it, you know? Um, oh yeah, the, oh yeah. The occasional thing to fund a server auction here or there, very, very, very small amounts. Whilst he was, or well, prior to me, of his mm -hmm. gene pool was available. So, you know, I am glad I've done what I've done because, well, yeah, I appreciate old time one for collecting that. You know what I've been able yeah. to work with, but he wasn't really about giving it to the wider world. You know. No, no, he, he was passionate. I mean, this is, this is the result of passion. You know, there's, it's, it's absolutely a lot of work has been done, you know, yeah. leading up, leading up to this point. And, um, you know, you're, you best believe we're going to see things pop up now. Like people are like, Oh, I got this skunk, this Alaskan skunk thing and this and that, and all these other things that keep popping up where people are like oh i got this skunk now and this and that <laughs> I know, it's and, oh yeah it's already and it's so it embarrassing it's, it's embarrassing anybody who can see through the bullshit it's so obvious man like you didn't have it before you know if you didn't, didn't have, have skunk prior to 2020 and now right. you've got it you've got it off me go yep. fuck yourself if you say any different you lying piece of yep. shit if well you, you know what's funny people before, are gonna take where was it uh, they're going to take uh, good skunks and they're going to like from you, they're going to take a good skunk and they're probably going to step on it with some of their fucking boof hybrid mm -hmm. crap. And then they're going to read sticks re will, but they're welcome to. Right, right. Exactly. And, and it will make it better, but they're going to do that and rename it. And, Oh, I found this skunk and it's this and that and this and that. It will make anything like, better. Trust me. If it will. Grow, it will. If you, if you grow enough of, of, of the, it'll make their fucking gene pool better. It'll improve their gene pool, but it won't well, make one better. Exactly, exactly. You know, and and the one the one thing that I wanted to do when um when I got your seeds and what I still plan on doing is I want to start all the seeds, separate everything into different categories. We got the blueberries and strawberries and and berries. There's and we every got... fruit you can imagine, bro. I've literally, yep. I can't there think is. of a fruit somebody hasn't found out of those packs, you know? That's right. There, it is. There's every terp. So you got the berries, and then you got the skunks, and then you got the hazes, and then you got the funk, right? So I want to separate all of those into their separate categories, keep the, keep the male and females of each kind, create seed lines of each kind and start kind of separating them into their own seed line and kind of see what I can get out of it and say, okay, well now I got, you know, it's, it's basically starting to whatever that, whatever options are available, selecting for that direction. And yeah. it's like, if I, if I get, if I get, you know, skunks and berries then I'm going to, I'm going to select towards skunks and I'm going to select toward berries, whatever the best ones are. Are the are, is the direction I'm going to select towards, and then just make seed lines, preserve it, and probably end up crossing with land races at some point and making some good shit with it, you know, and and uh, and and whatnot. But kind of preserving it and 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 kind of ex extending those directions and those those lines and and making more seeds and just keeping it fucking pure and, and uh, not really introducing anything else other than what's already there and just and just saving it for my like my seed bank what i always do with my all my land races and shit i just save it save it for future for breeding and for preservation and stuff and and all that so i'm pretty happy that you did that that turp ticket deal as soon as i saw that i was like well i gotta make a move on that <laughs> you know and i was like i'm gonna well, i'm gonna you know that does sound like an awesome plan, bro. I definitely want to see you do that. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. That exactly that kind of thing, you know, separating mm -hmm. things out, isolating things, making their yeah. own breeding from within the gene pool, or if they are going to breed out of it, preferably like with land races like you. Yeah. But yeah. If you're free, bro, 
I suggest we wrap up this episode because we've got less than 60 seconds now. Would you yep. come back for a second episode and talk us through all your genetics that you've got that we're looking on screen now, all the land races and oh, all yeah, the things man. you found? I, I'd love to hear it. I'm sure the audience yeah. would too. I'd love so to. I'll close this and Rich will be in touch with you shortly. And I'll thank everybody for listening. It's been a great episode. And Steve will be with us for part two now. Excellent. Thank you.